All right, there's a few news stories that caught my attention. Uh, this one in particular, uh, Trump's picks, an incredible number of them are rapists, which I guess we shouldn't be surprised with the president himself being accused of something like 26 sexual molestations. And, on, and as we found out last time, very proud of the fact that this was just his habit to molest women all the time and expect to get away with it. And uh, I think it's important to remember that probably 90% of rapes are never reported because women just get abused and they get no justice. So if there's reported ones, you can probably assume there are many, many more that were unreported. But it just is unbelievable how many of his people are known to be rapists. The Secretary of Education, the Commerce Secretary, the Health and Human Services Director, the White House Efficiencies are, and it goes on and on and on. So uh, it is an amazing throwback to before the Me Too movement. In the 50s, this was pretty common, I think, and just not mentioned. Um, but supposedly, well, a lot of us had hoped that America had moved beyond this culture of women just being second-class citizens that are just toys for men to use. Uh, but we're going back to that with the Trump gang. However, it is amazing that one of his first picks was rejected already, um, showing that his power is much less than any of us expected. I certainly expected all the Republicans to just lie down and let him get away with everything, and that did not happen. They managed to torpedo Matt Gaetz. Um, and so it may be that a lot of these people will actually be torpedoed. They, his Peter also torpedoed his plan to have forced the Senate and Congress to go into recess so he would not have to bother with any approval of his picks. And um, they may even be able to force him to actually undergo the FBI background checks they're supposed to take. He tried to avoid all that so he can just appoint people like a dictator and have no questions asked. And it looks like he's getting resistance from Republicans. And um, uh, it reminds me of the fact that last time, the only thing that saved our democracy was other Republicans would not go along with his outrageous demands. And it looks like there are still some Republicans that don't go along with him, which is very surprising to me. I thought they had purged the Republican Party of everyone who was not 100% loyal to Trump. But that is not true. And this is what my friends in London told me. They said, oh, don't worry about it because his fellow Republicans will knife him in the back to take power before long. And that apparently is going to happen. That would be nice. That's the way the system is supposed to work. The system is not expecting everybody to be angels. It's expecting people to pretty much be selfish and greedy for power and yet have a system of checks and balances so as they climb over each other like a snake pit, they don't destroy the system. And so uh, we'll see if that works. Anyway, um, so the UK is investing a lot in facial recognition tech. Uh, the American police have been using it for years and it has a very bad reputation. It has a very high chance of fingering the wrong person and unfortunately, uh, something I learned when I worked in financial work, I thought I would put out a report, and I, I thought I'll tell him it's just an estimate. My boss said, no, don't do that. Just be late, but if you tell anyone anything and then you have some kind of limitation after it. They will always forget the limitation and just say, you said this. And that's what happened. They warned people that these facial recognition systems are not reliable and that the police use them anyway and believe them too much. So we'll see what happens in the UK. But over here, there are a bunch of people falsely, I think seven people falsely arrested and prosecuted, and they were all black because it's spectacularly bad at identifying black faces. And uh, so if they're going to use it, hopefully they know not to believe it too much. And this is uh, one of the top 10 vulnerabilities of artificial intelligence systems is over-reliance. People tend to believe what it says without understanding that it's often telling you the wrong thing. So this is an amazing story and I think it's kind of interesting because it's something a lot of amateurs do. So this guy in Kansas City found a um, health club with a vulnerable website, so he hacked in lowered his own premium to $1, got a fake ID badge, and then offered his consulting services to the company, hoping they would be grateful and hire him to help secure it. And instead, they prosecuted. This is actually extremely common. Researchers find a vulnerability. They then try to communicate with the company and sell them something. And the company feels like, we have now been hacked, and now you're trying to extort us. And you're trying to threaten us. And I don't know whether he was really trying to do that, but it's very easy for them to get that impression. I've had this happen to me. Um, so it's, this is uh, why it is very dangerous and considered sort of sloppy and disrespectful, disreputable if you notify anybody of a vulnerability who does not have a bug bounty program. The more professional thing to do is just let them be hacked. Unless they have a vulnerability disclosure policy, 
or a bug bounty program, it is safe to assume that they are completely unaware of how security works and all they will do is attack you if you tell them about a vulnerability. That's almost always the case. Or they'll, mostly they'll ignore you because they can't even understand you. But if they do understand you, they'll blame it on you and attack you most likely. Um, all right, let me just check and see if you have no, no comments in the Twitch. All right, so in India, just like here, even worse than here, women have a huge problem. Uh, there's been a lot of like public rapes and everything in India. There's a really pro big problem with the status of women. And here, in the villages, the women go out into the forests and stuff to gather things, like for food and stuff, and they um, have wildlife monitoring drones now to monitor what's going on with wildlife, and yet the men monitoring those drones are using it to stalk the women and intimidate them and the women are having to be quiet and hide, and that makes them more vulnerable to the predators. Their old system was to sing and make noise while they were out there, so the predators would stay away, I mean the animal predators. So anyway, it's, uh, I've seen a lot of these scandals about the status of women in India. They clearly need like a women's rights movement, and they're in the early stages of it where a lot of the men are not willing to give the women any rights. Microsoft has brought Windows Recall out. This is the very controversial product they announced about four months ago that was going to take screenshots of your machine every 15 seconds and do optical character recognition and keep all that data so you can search through it with AI in case you forget what you were doing a few days ago. Um, but apparently, they rolled it out only to Windows Insiders now, and apparently it doesn't work. In addition to being very hazardous to your privacy, it in fact keeps freezing up, not actually taking the screenshots it should, and not, under, not be able to search through the screenshots like you should be able to, and so on. So uh, this is the Microsoft I know and love, you know, always fouling everything up. Um, and so the China hacking of American telephone companies is continuing to come out and be much, much more severe than anybody thought it would be. Uh, the com it's Volt Typhoon, which is presumably part of the Chinese military. That's the name they give this group. And what they found is that they hacked into American telephone companies and they hacked into the legal uh, wiretap database, or not wiretap, but uh, legal database to tell the cops who's been calling who. And I knew that was pretty common. I knew that's what China tried to do um, 15 years ago in 2010 when they hacked into uh, Google, that's what they wanted. But I didn't realize what the point is, and the point is they found out which phones are being monitored by law enforcement, and that informs them which of their spies have been caught. And so the Chinese spies that are here that are not being monitored by law enforcement are the ones that are still useful because they haven't been caught yet. So this is uh, very much like the center of basically every James Bond movie, they have a list of spies, and it's like super, super important not to let the other enemy have the list of spies, and they basically found that list of spies by doing this. So people are getting very upset about how dangerous it is. Um, and that's an interesting angle I had not thought of. So there's quite a few articles about that. Microsoft 365 has been down. That's pretty rude. Again, the Microsoft I know and love. Um, so hopefully they'll figure it out and patch it. Uh, a lot of people depend on that. I think every college I'm at, their internal email and everything runs on that. I, Maybe some services you people use are tied to Office 365 around here. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, all right. And uh, I read this, and I was interested in trying to figure out what it is. But what's going on is um, conservatives in California, students and teachers and student clubs, if they try to publish or promote conservative values, they tend to be silenced. And of course, their idea of conservative values are pretty offensive these days, like women are genetically inferior and blacks are inferior and things like that. Uh, and if you try saying, publishing things like that, of course, you tend to get shut down and then they sue saying we should have the right to say that and it does set up an interesting First Amendment issue. Um, are you allowed to, I remember when Milo Yiannopoulos, a British, gay, huge far right wing troll wanted to give a talk at, I think, UC Berkeley or some normal college, and they approved him, and then they disapproved him because there were huge protests. This is actually a big topic of debate, an interesting topic. Should you have free speech where people can say anything, or should you not even let people speak if their opinion is out of the current fashionable idea of what you should say? Uh, and these things go back and forth. The old school rule was that you should let people say anything and then let people rebut them and argue about it. But um, this is a tough thing. Are there certain opinions that are so harmful that you shouldn't even talk about them. And so anyway, the, the battle rages on. Let me check for um, comments. There are none. I'm going to stop this recording.